So I'm making this video to give an owner's perspective on the Mila G7166. There's not a whole lot of owner's videos about, well, dishwashers in general can be a little lacking. Um, and on top of that, Mila dishwashers tend not to have a lot of videos either just because of the volume that they sell. These are a little niche, um, especially given the prices. So I had a Frigidaire dishwasher before. It worked pretty all right. I thought it cleaned all right, but you know, this was a little bit of a splurged upgrade. I wanted something with a third rack and I grew up with a Mila dishwasher at my parents' house. It's a 15 year old, uh, still working great, uh, Mila Excella. So it's actually a pretty good comparison to this one because it, this also has a little LCD screen just like those do. And as you'll see in a moment, it's actually a bit of a step backwards compared to the older technology there but those were also a little higher end at the time. Um, still not really much of a reason for a step backwards over 15 years, but I digress. Anyway, I installed this myself. Installation was a pretty straightforward, very easy. The legs level from the front, front and rear, so it's pretty easy to get centered. The door guide for installing a custom panel is not the easiest in the world to follow. Um, it would be nice if the markings on the door guide indicated where the top of the dishwasher door should land rather than asking you to measure out from the bottom, especially because as you can see in this case, the door I got, while it is a stylistic match, it's not from the original manufacturer of these cabinets, so the height is not perfect. So measuring uh, the kick height like it was recommending wasn't really useful to me because I wanted it to be a little centered. In terms of the height difference, I wanted it to be even on the top and bottom, how much it was extending past the original cabinetry. Uh, moving on, the other thing I wish the door guide would recommend is the handle placement as well. I ended up putting the handle a little lower than I would like in terms of leverage of opening the door. It's not a big deal, but it's something that I would have liked to have a little guidance on. Um, other than that, installation was pretty easy. The owner's manual online is not very accurate when it comes to the hose fitting for the hot water inlet. It, it is a standard fitting, I believe, what is that, 3 eighths here in the U.S. Um, I might be 5 eighths, I might be misremembering the number, but suffice to say it's the standard fitting. Um, so there was no adapter needed. Same thing for the drain hose. The owner's manual, if you read online, makes it look like it might be some sort of specialized thing, which caused some panic. Uh, but when I received it, it was perfectly normal. So taking a look at the controls. This is the light that's on when it's running. You have your cycles here, you have more. You have the program to select between them, Auto DOS, Express, Timer, so you can go in half hour increments, then the controls. So the 7156 is nearly identical to this. The difference being that this has Auto DOS, which is why it's a 10 digit step up from the 56, this being a 66. In the 56, you actually get the intense zone button here. Now, I did not realize this at the time that I picked it. I thought the auto DOS functionality was cool. And I, the website also said that this had the Mila at home with auto start. So I thought that the pairing was really a cool functionality worth stepping up since there's a $50 difference between the 5.6 and 6.6. What I did not realize is that the 6.6 loses the intense zone functionality. It is not in the screen. It is nowhere. So you actually lose features compared to the 6.6. Um, as a result, in terms of actual cycle features, it's more comparable to a 5000 series. The only thing you have over a 5000 is the crystal cycle, which is a matter of software locking since all it does is vary the temperature really so that way it's not damaging fine um, dishware. Weird thing to emit from the 5000 series, especially at these price points, but I'm not their product design here. So it was annoying to realize that this does not have the intense zone. The literature online does not mention that it, that it has an intense zone, so it's one of those things that, well, you know, if you had read the feature list, you would have realized, but also thinking logically, when you step up in model numbers, you do not expect to lose functionality. So there's the auto DOS, um, as mentioned. You get a voucher for six of these discs for free, in addition to the one that comes with the dishwasher. It says they last about 20 cycles. I found that to be reasonably accurate. Um, now, you might be wondering about the detergent inside these discs. It seems to be fairly standard dishwasher powder. So I've seen people online refill these with Cascade Complete Powder, and I'll probably do the same when I get into my last disc. Um, they're a little too expensive to justify buying at $17 each or $100 for six of them. I mean, you know, it's a little ridiculous for dishwasher powder, especially something as standard. They don't shoehorn you into using it. You have a normal detergent dispenser there if you choose, but having the automatic dispensing is really nice, and uh, it's a nice convenience feature, really. You never have to remember. 
So I'll probably be refilling them myself once we get to that point. I don't think it's going to cause any issues. There's no DRM in these cartridges, so it's, it, the machine doesn't really care as long as there's a good quality powder inside of there. You can see that little notch at the bottom. That's where it ends up dispensing from. So as I mentioned, it does have this screen here. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it on so I could show you. When you go to the more setting, there's actually only one feature there, or one cycle, I should say, underneath this, and it's rinse and hold. You would expect that there would be more options under the more setting, but it's really just one. It's a little bit of a waste, um, all things considered, to even have the LCD. Really, all the LCD does is um, allow you to access the settings more easily. So things like water hardness, um, auto DOS, obviously, rinse aid, meal at home, remote update, display, buzzer, blah, blah, blah. All these options, if the features like extra clean and extended drying, um, which those two are available on the 5000 series, the difference is that without this LCD, they're much harder to program. You have to go through a button sequence in order to do it. They do exist though, so this just makes it easier. But again, you know, given that you have this LCD, you would expect a little more actual functionality, things that you'd actually use on an extended basis or regular basis. Things like this extended drawing, for example, you have to go into the settings menu. On my parents' 15-year-old Mila Futuros, not only is the LCD um, actually a little larger than this, it shows more information at once. I believe it's at least a two or three line display. Um, a two line display, if I remember correctly. And after selecting a cycle, then you have the option um, in the more options for every cycle to select cycle specific options like extended drying. So you could do that on a per cycle basis. Here it's like a permanent dis enabled disable, which is again, a bit of a step backwards in terms of the UI. You have the express button here. It's supposed to take time off of the cycles, but see so you can hear normal is typically around three hours, 20 minutes. See, and it's also, the interface is really annoying. As soon as you select a cycle, it'll start locking you out saying continue with OK. Um, there's no start either. You just select the cycle and close the door. Again, a little weird. It's it, The user interface is not very friendly. Um, it's a little demanding. As you can see, we're already back to that. So continue with OK, 3 hours, 19 minutes. If you hit Express, it shaves it down to 2 hours, 36 minutes. I mean, if we're being perfectly realistic here, that's not very express. That's a long cycle. I don't mind long cycles at all, but it makes the express button a little ridiculous. It's not very useful. So as a result, it's really not something I use. And again, see the neediness of this continue with OK. You can't actually do anything. So I'm turning that off. So moving in and looking at these racks. Now, of course, the rack design is something that, you know, it's if we're being honest, it's the primary reason you step up to a Mela versus a Bosch, even though the cleaning power is very good in both. So this is the main reason that I stepped up. I really like having these racks on the bottom, these fold-down racks. So these two do not come with the 7166. I ordered those online myself. It's about $40 to order the clips and these two short pieces to add there. I like the extended functionality that they provide. Um, depending on the height, you have the middle rack, you can add extra glasses there, but what I frequently use it for is actually more soiled spatulas and uh, cookware. So that way they're not taking up space on the top rack, and it also makes sure that they get clean as well. Not that anything really ever comes out dirty in this. So the only adjustability on this rack are these two tines here. They'll fold down. Um, not in steps, it's either all up or all down. Back here, now the uh, I saw in videos that this side used to be removable. Um, but they've decided to change that in this generation. Um, I'm, I'm going to be honest, after COVID, it's probably cost-cutting, if we're being realistic. Same thing with wash arms, for example. Those are now plastic, and in the past I read that they used to be stainless steel. Personally, I don't mind that. Plastic and stainless steel wash arms, it's really not that big a deal. The only thing that you would be, want to be concerned about long-term is the wash arms splitting. So, for example, I know in some Whirlpool dishwashers, the plastic arms would split after some years of use, and they would end up spraying water in ways that uh, the design of the dishwasher wasn't expecting, and it would start to leak out the bottom of the door as a result because it was being sprayed past the seals. Um, I'm going to hope that that won't be the case here with these plastic wash arms, but naturally the stainless steel is going to be more impervious to that long term. But I digress. Moving on. Uh, now, the way these are shaped, it's a love it or hate it kind of thing. Uh, you, your dishware will either fit perfectly in them or it won't at all. So you can see here that these plastic containers don't really fit all that well into these tines. 
Um, and of course, this being a European dishwasher, you can put stuff like that in the bottom rack, these plastics, because they won't, there's no heating element to melt them, which is one of the main reasons I ended up with a European style dishwasher over something like a KitchenAid or Whirlpool, which I personally think are perfectly good products for the price. Um, I, I don't find them to be bad at all. So they'll either fit or they won't. You got to get creative. Fortunately, the way that they come out of the side means that there's usually a way to fit them in. It's just not always going to be the most ideal fitment. Uh, but that being said, most standard ceramic plates and stuff, I, I really don't have much of an issue fitting them in. Of course, you have the alternating facing tines right there. Uh, this four quadrant design, I find, makes it easy to fit in a lot of dishes, a normal dishware. When you start fitting in pots and pans and casserole dishes, that's when you start to notice that the it's, it's quite niche, the way this is organized inside, because you start to lose a little space fitting those in versus your standard dishwasher. So it's a give and take relationship here in terms of organization. Looking at the second rack, my only real complaint about this, uh, well, I have two. These half tines only go halfway up. It would be nice if you were adjusting the entire length of rows because it would make it easier to fit in certain dishware like cereal bowls up here. The other part is, is since this is located more off center, it does impact when you put certain bowls up here and plates, it impacts the ability of cups to be placed on either side, which I find to be personally annoying. These cup racks also, uh, they're in, there's, the heights are not the same each side. So if I fold this one out, you'll notice that this one is higher than this one. They, for my particular dishes, these are the cups I use most often, they don't seem to be at the perfect height in either case. So when I put cups up here, I cannot fit them underneath this rack. And when I put cups here, I cannot fit them on top of this rack. It would be nice if these were height adjustable or in just some more central position so that way I could fit cups above and below. Of course, you have the three level adjustability on this side. Now, one of the things that I saw pointed out in videos versus the older models, is that the wash system is actually now enclosed inside the cabinet. Now, there's ups and downs to that. Naturally, I think it'll be more reliable long-term in terms of preventing leakage for the wash arms and the wash piping to be inside the container. But that does mean that you lose space inside for the attachment points, like right there. Now, I find it weird that they juts in this much. I would have expected a little better, um, a little more svelte design, considering the price. Um, especially when you look at more standard dishwashers, actually most other brands that have always run it inside, the attachment points are not really as bulky, generally speaking. So it, it seems a little odd. Uh, that being said, really not too big a deal. You know, it, as, as you can imagine, you really got to learn how your dishes fit in here. Uh, it takes some trial and error. It takes a lot of time to, to learn, but you eventually you'll figure it out. Now you can see that these cup racks here versus some older models, these are now plastic with silicone lining. The silicone lining is really a nice touch. I do wish that they had stuck with the metal though. I found the metal to be a little slimmer, um, took, took up just a little less space, and I think long term it would also be sturdier than the plastic ones. I am a little concerned about constant heat and exposure over 10 to 15 years, um, if that's gonna make them brittle and crack off. Same thing with these ridges here. It's a little form over function, if we're being honest. So looking at the third rack here, this is their upgraded third rack. Now, this side here goes up and down. If you slide it all the way, you can make it deeper or shallower. This one, you can slide this way and you lose the center channel when you do that. But the purpose of it is so that way, if you have really tall dish, uh, glassware in that top rack, you can make sure that it doesn't hit this when you close it. Um, it's a nice idea. I'm not sure how practical it is long-term. Personally, I think that the standard rack is actually better. Uh, you get the same amount of space, but it lifts out of the dishwasher more easily, I believe. In this one, you cannot remove this rack without taking off these clips each time, which is obviously not very practical. And so if you have a silverware tray right next to it, like I do here, it means that you can't actually load and unload it while it's open. You have to basically keep going back and forth. So open this drawer, slide this in, keep going. Oh, one of the things I also wanted to show, 
the wash arm is very heavily recessed into the top. So generally, if you can fit it in past the door seal, it means that it will not interfere with the wash arm. And the wash arm is quite big. I'm gonna slide it here. You can see that's the third level wash arm. It's pretty sizable. I think it has to be most likely the largest in the industry when it comes to third level washes. Now, the other thing you can tell, the third rack, as a result of its design, is a little bulkier than you'll see in many others, uh, Bosch's, even the KitchenAid and Whirlpool's uh, for the standard third level rack, I'll say. Um, the Mila's is, is thicker, does take up more space. So you do have to learn and play around with the height adjustment on the middle rack in order to fit things. I know when I fit in uh, casserole dishes, like a 9 die 13 pan, I do have to raise this middle rack up in order to make it fit. The other thing to keep in mind is you'll notice that this wash arm is relatively close to the level of those little fold down racks. So if you put stuff there, you do have to give the arm a spin and make sure it's not going to hit them on there. And again, if it does, you're gonna have to adjust that rack up. Um, just something I found because the dishwasher is more tightly packed, I've had to be conscious of versus the standard dishwasher I had before. Now, uh, as far as cleaning goes, uh, it's it's been absolutely superb. Everything comes out clean. Uh, there's only been two exceptions. One time I had some things arranged here and the way I had the stuff underneath this cup shelf meant that the stuff on top was not getting any water spray. So that was more organizational error than the fault of the dishwasher. The other thing, and I'm going to chalk it up to being new, um, twice on silicone items, I have found that after a full cycle, there's this weird, consistent, um, very greasy-like film on them. I'm not sure what it is. It's not present on the other dishes and stuff that go through the cycle. It's only on the silicone items. Um, and the film comes off quite easily. So I'm not sure if that's the rinse aid, the detergent, or if it's the water softener. The water softener is using a finish dishwasher salt. I doubt that's it. But um, as a precaution, and because I'm using the water softener, I did go into the settings and reduce the amount of rinse aid that it's dispensing. Um, we'll see if that, you know, changes anything over time. Other than that, everything comes out very clean, including on the top rack. My concern really was that silverware wouldn't get clean. Uh, since, you know, the in the traditional dishwashers, when you have the basket on the bottom, uh, it's more in the intense spray zone versus on top. But Mila did a good job designing that. Everything comes out very clean. You really get that squeaky clean. Uh, I thought that was a bit of a joke previously, but no, it really does come out squeaky clean. Tangibly, tactilely different versus my standard dishwasher before that I always thought did an okay job cleaning. But this really is in another league. I put on baked on stuff in casserole dishes, 9 by 13 pans. I really don't even expect the stuff to come out clean. I just want to make it easier for me to basically finish the job later and it'll come out clean. I was actually absolutely shocked, really. So it does do a good job cleaning. Now, as much as I love this dishwasher, I did debate returning it. In the end, I decided to keep it. But the reason I debated it and I seriously considered just trading it in for a Bosch Benchmark or a Bosch 800, even though this is actually more comparable in features to a 500, it's significantly more expensive than those because it does have the auto open door, which helps with drying quite a lot especially when you put in certain plastic items. Uh, and on that note, drying is very, very good. It's only some plastic items, not even all, but some that won't come out completely dry. Now, uh, but I digress again. So the reason I debated returning it is at the time I bought it, the Mila Interactive Dishwasher Buyer's Guide, where you select the features you want, and the 7166 dishwasher product page. Uh, actually, it was a, a pretty clear-cut case of false advertising. It said that this had Mila at home with auto start. And the buyer's guide said full app control uh, of the dishwasher. Now, after I got it and I set it up, I found out that that actually simply wasn't the case. Um, you cannot control the dishwasher from the app. You can, only, you can only view the status and when it's starting a cycle, stop the cycle. Uh, so needless to say, I was pretty upset by that, especially at this price point to not receive the features that you're told you're getting. And in conjunction with the auto DOS, I thought it was really good functionality. You could actually just decide on a whim anywhere to start the dishwasher. You don't have to worry about detergent and all that. I contacted their support. I made a technician appointment. He reflashed the firmware. The technician appointment was superb. Great guy, really good service. Um, the customer service was god awful. The absolute worst I have ever experienced. I felt disrespected as a consumer. I felt disrespected as a person. They really treat you like a nitwit. 
Um, they confirmed at every level of the company that the website is wrong. It does not have auto start. Uh, I was frankly very upset given the price of this dishwasher. Um, at the time of this recording, it was $1,800 before tax. Again, not a small amount of money for a dishwasher, especially when you can go get perfectly good dishwashers with third racks for $600 these days. So there, I filed a case with their customer support. They escalated it to the quality assurance department. The day after my case was filed with them, they updated the 7166 product page and they removed the mention of auto start. Uh, pretty clearly showing you that they knew what they were doing was wrong and they recognized the mistake. I told them that at the, you know, the, the quality, the supervisor asked me, what resolution am I hoping for? And I said, well, I'd like a dishwasher with the features that I had paid for, the one I was expecting, which is a 7366 at this point. That was the one that was confirmed to have all the features I had been told I would be getting. Uh, the quality assurance department said no. They declined my case. They didn't offer any sort of goodwill compensation, which was not even a, like free detergent or anything. They just said no. Thank you for letting us know. Goodbye. Uh, they said the owner's manual says features may vary, which is a pretty nonsensical excuse for false advertising on the website. Uh, even my dealer did not really know of the distinction in terms of Wi-Fi connectivity between 7166 and 7366 because Mila is not upfront about the difference in functionality. It, it really is disappointing for a company with their reputation and for a product of this good. Uh, I was so aggravated by this, I really spent a long time debating whether or not I should return this. But ultimately, I decided that even to move over to a Bosch, um, it just would not be as satisfying from a functionality perspective in terms of the way it cleans in the organization. Now, not that's not to, damp, to ding Bosch at all. I, my mom had one for many, many years before her Milos, and she absolutely loved it. But looking online at the pictures, I just like the rack organization in here more. Um, but the cleaning power is supposed to be as good, if not better, in the Bosch's. So I acknowledge that there are superb products and they actually have more features, especially at the benchmark level. My, many more features than this 7166 does. Um, so yeah, I mean, as a result of that experience, the customer support was really, really bad. I, again, so rude, disrespectful. They really treated me like a nitwit. They were not upfront. They acknowledged the problem, offered absolutely no goodwill, um, absolutely nothing as a result of me buying this based off of their false advertising. Um, I, that I, this will probably be the absolute last meal of product I ever buy. I cannot justify giving the company another dime of my money. So, uh, great dishwasher, but unfortunately really awful company. They do not stand behind with any integrity. But um, So if you're considering this, if you're dead set on a Mila, you can't be swayed to <laughs> perhaps give your dollar to a company that will treat you a little better. I would honestly avoid the 7166. If you want the AutoDOS functionality, I would recommend stepping up to a 7366 because then you'll have all the features that actually make AutoDOS more useful, like Auto Start. You get some extra cycles as well, including an extra quiet cycle, um, some machine cleaning cycles, you, and I believe you, you generally, you just get more out of the LCD functionality there at the screen. The 7166 is a bit of a, an ugly duckling in the lineup. It's it's like a 7000 series, but with the functionality of a 5000 series. If you like the 7166, I would get a 5000 series, honestly. Go for the 5056, I believe, is, is a good model. If you really want this particular style with the LCD, I would go with a 7566, so you, or a 7156, so you get the... Uh, intense zone functionality. The auto DOS is really something I would skip. I would not have picked this model knowing what I know today. But um, it's just at this point in time, it's really not worth the hassle to return it, exchange it, go through the installation all over again, um, especially mounting the custom panel took me a while there. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to give you an owner's perspective here. I'm, you know, just a, a pretty average in terms of, you know, my kitchen and everything, it's not terribly fancy, not terribly special, but I know of Mila's dishwasher reputation, really wanted to get the best here. It was a bit of a splurge and gift for myself. Um, it really ended up being a mixed bag with the way I was treated by the company. Some regret there, but ultimately, again, I've decided to... The dishwasher itself, I just can't complain too much about, but the company, I can. So, uh, hope this was useful. 
if you have any questions or comments, you can post down below. I, not that this video is going to get a whole lot of views, but I still figured I'd like to give my experience somewhere, my thoughts, just to, to add to the anybody's research online doing some, because when I was doing research, it would, didn't get a whole lot of videos or perspectives like this. Um, but post down below, I'll, I'll respond to your comments, answer questions if there are any. Uh, thanks for taking a look.